I always feel an affinity to St. Matthew. There's a, uh, there's a profound sense. The morning of my ordination, my classmates and I, we prayed a holy hour with the bishop in his private chapel in the chancery uh, right next to the cathedral. Sit in front of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We're just like hours away from laying our lives down as priests, and I'm sitting there just feeling so wildly unworthy of what's about to happen. And uh, I remember hearing the Lord in that moment just say to me what he said to Matthew, which was like, follow me. Like, I know what you are. I know what I'm calling, but follow me, follow me. That's the Lord's way. He uses the most unlikely instruments for his purposes. If you haven't yet watched the Chosen series, I know, um, I almost just said Bishop Joe. I mean, Father Joe. I know Father Joe's mentioned it a ton over the last year. I know I've mentioned it before, but the, uh, that Chosen series, uh, which depicts the gospel, depicts the life and ministry of Jesus, the way it depicts Matthew in particular is so extraordinary, and this scene in particular is so powerful. So the, the Pharisees ask his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners. Implying this is not what a religious teacher is supposed to be doing. He's not supposed to be associating with these sorts of people. And Jesus' response, of course, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I came to call sinners. I came to call sinners. So I was praying with that. I was brought back in my memory, my imagination to... Um, well, twice in my life now, I've had opportunities to go to Honduras for mission trips. Um, the first one was a medical mission trip. Uh, at the time, I've lost the ability, but I, I've, at the time, I was pretty darn fluent in Spanish, and I was a, I was a translator for a, a team of doctors, doctors and dentists and, and all sorts of folks. Um, so what we would do is we would get up really early in the morning, around 5 o'clock in the morning, and we would load up on a bus and drive to these very remote mountain villages in Honduras. I mean, I'd be sleeping on the bus and you'd wake up as we rumbled into um, the makeshift hospital triage area that they would set up, a school gym. Sometimes it was just out in a farm field, you know, it was, it was, it was really something. But what struck me the very first time we rolled in, the sun's just rising and there's this line of people, like as far as you can see. And, and I'm thinking like, I wonder what those people are doing. And then someone goes, those are, those are the people that we're going to see today. I'm like, all of them? Like, it looked like, like 800 people. Um, I'm like, how long are we going to be here? It was, it was an incredible experience. And what was amazing, you would sit there, and one by one the person would come in, and they would just name everything. They would point out every issue, every blemish on their skin, every... Everything that looked weird felt weird. Every, every issue, no matter how, like I would say, no matter how embarrassing it might have been, they just laid it all out. It was, it was an incredible thing. It was an incredible thing. I learned a lot of vocab uh, that I didn't have in AP Spanish then, uh, but I learned, like, it was just an amazing thing to watch as they, like, there was no dancing around any of it. Like, just, they said it like it was because they knew that this might be my only chance at healing like, I might not get to another doctor for years, if not the rest of my life. So I better, I better tell the doctor about this issue that I'm having. They were so aware of their need for healing. I remember thinking, man, would that I approach confession like these folks approach the doctors? It was a game changer for me. I still think that I dance around a lot of things. I still think a lot of us dance around a lot of things when we go to confession, but like these sinners in the gospel who were drawing near to Jesus, they were so aware, like Matthew included, right? They were so aware of their need for healing. They were so aware of how they were just mired in sin, mired in this inextricable like situation. I can't get myself out of this thing I've put myself in. In particular, these tax collectors. Like they were just stuck, absolutely stuck. And these public manifest sinners, absolutely stuck. And then one day, someone enters into this situation where I am so stuck and powerless and has the power to pull me out and to show me that there's another way of being, that I am somehow loved and I can be something more than what I've been. You know, great sinners 
and great saints, they're made of the same ingredients. They're made of the same stuff. An immense amount of passion, hunger. Right? It's the same, like the same hunger that, you know, drives sinners to do what they do is the same hunger that drives the saints to pursue sanctity. It's, it's just misguided. It's misdirected, right? You don't yell at the guy who's eating out of the dumpster. You don't blame his hunger. You say, hey, can I show you where the banquet is? Right? That's what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to condemn our hunger. He came to redirect our hunger, redirect our desires to what truly satisfies it's like, let me show you what you're actually hungering for. And there's actually a, a food that satisfies. There's actually a food that satisfies. He came to redirect it. You know, when you look at the, the Pharisees and these tax collectors and sinners in this gospel, there's an there's a amazing dynamic here that the ones who were so desperately in need of healing, they knew it. Like both of them, both groups, the Pharisees and the tax collectors, they both needed healing. Only one group knew it. Only one group was aware of it, which meant that they were actually, the tax collectors and sinners, were actually in a much more spiritual, healthy place than the Pharisees. Let me put it this way. Like a sign of spiritual health or a sign of spiritual maturity is a growing awareness of my need for healing. Like my need for Jesus. To grow in holiness is not to need Jesus less. It's actually the opposite. To need him more. To see how deep the need goes. Like when you ask someone, you know, uh, if, you know, it was last time you went to confession, and they say, "Ah, oh, it's been a few years. I mean, I'm pretty good." Like, oh boy, like you're you're blind. You're blind to how deep you need healing. You know, Jesus said the Holy Spirit sent into the world to convict the world of sin, which is different than accuse. To be convicted of our sin is to see our sin, to see the need, to see. Like the MRI, the spiritual MRI, like here's the tumors. This is where I'm at odds and at war with the Lord. So let's beg the Holy Spirit today on this Feast of St. Matthew that the Holy Spirit would convict us anew of our sin, that we would see how much we need healing, how much we need Jesus, that we would never fall into the trap of self-sufficiency, of self-perfection. It's a very dangerous place to be. Amen.